In this video, I dive deep into the highly anticipated Dragon Age The Veil Guard, exploring all the significant changes made in this new installment, while avoiding any sort of story or companion spoilers. Join me as I analyze updates in graphics, gameplay mechanics, and narrative elements that have been reimagined for a new generation of gamers. Whether you're a longtime fan of the Dragon Age series or new to the franchise, this review and these tips will help you decide if you should take the plunge once again into the monster-filled realms of Thetis. Let's uncover together all the important things that can help you to understand, to fully enjoy, so, and ultimately, to conquer the game. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content on Dragon Age The Veil Guard and other exciting games. Let's start with a short, honest review. The Veil Guard introduces many simplifications, affecting both the gameplay and the story taking a completely different direction from what fans of the original game might expect. Similar to the approach taken with the Silent Hill 2 remake, it seems the developer was too eager to pave the way for new players by unlocking new possibilities. However, as a result, the once dark, captivating and immersive game world has lost much of its previous depth. The original Dragon Age kicked off with a classic, almost boring narrative of battling the great evil to save the world but it was the way the story was brought to life that showcased the game's true strength. The threat instantly felt tangible, instilling a deep-seated fear that made the atmosphere heavy with despair, making us to understand from the very beginning that only a miracle, fueled by relentless determination, could offer hope. Well, you can let go of any expectations for a grim atmosphere in The Veil Guard. BioWare tosses all of that aside, sweeping away all the darker aspects of the Dragon Age saga. Right from the start, our path to heroism is clear, facing a villain who can flaunt his might, but ultimately, will be defeated for sure. Simply put, instead of tension and engagement, the game offers relaxation, and this is the first point where I felt disappointment, because the thrilling dark world was a key ingredient that made the previous installment so unique and enjoyable. Once again, much like the Silent Hill 2 remake, this new installment feels excessively lengthy, Eventually, it becomes tedious, and it starts to feel monotonous, lacking both challenge and diversity. The concept of revisiting various locations to tackle additional tasks and unlock previously inaccessible areas definitely adds a layer of dynamism to the game. Yet, it mainly hinges on using a unique skill, identifying a certain detail, or collecting an item that opens up new paths, and the absence of the aforementioned heavy atmosphere makes the experience even more tedious in the long run. In my view, the new atmosphere and the radically altered gameplay mechanics would be a better fit for a gameplay experience of 25, 30 hours instead of stretching to more than 50 long hours. If I'm being candid and truthful without crossing the line into harshness, I would say that this isn't exactly the fantasy fulfillment an RPG enthusiast might hope for. If you are like me, seeking an interactive form of exploration, immersing yourself in the world, and discovering new quests upon engaging with NPCs, you may experience a sense of disappointment just like me. Sadly, the previously mentioned simplifications have impacted the range of choices we can make, leading to a predominantly linear narrative and a very straightforward plot that lacks depth. It becomes difficult to relate to a character when our ability to shape their conversations is so constrained, particularly when, even with the opportunity to make a choice, we often end up with the same result. Moreover, the dynamics feel a bit too harmonious, with a noticeable absence of tension and drama. Everyone gets along famously and is exceedingly kind and courteous, and this is another point where I also felt disappointment, recalling the memorable conflicts of the previous installments. In addition, the areas we traverse are primarily designed for gameplay purposes, like combat and environmental challenges, rather than for storytelling or enhancing the overall narrative experience. The only positive thing I can mention here is the companion's narratives, which are rich with a whimsical and funny eeriness that really captures the imagination. If earlier I told you that the gameplay can easily become monotonous, now I have to tell you that, despite having an impressive skill set, the combat, which is abundant and presents no challenge, will make it even more unexciting. On normal difficulty, you can comfortably conquer a boss that is a dozen levels higher than you, the only thing you need to do is invest a bit more time, 
that's really all it takes. You won't be caught off guard by any new techniques or the requirement for a tactical shift. Just keep attacking and dodging, and that's all you need to do for more than 50 hours. To make matters worse, it gets even more frustrating when you consider that the class system and party setup are simply ridiculous. Your companions are essentially invincible, foes usually have their sights set on you, and no matter how well or poorly your party is assembled, the strategy boils down to simply attacking, dodging, and evading hits while trying to deal as much damage as possible. My final verdict? In one word, disappointing. This is not the end of Dragon Age that I was expecting. Sure, we have beautiful fairy tale-esque locations and some enjoyable dialogues. Plus the technical side is quite impressive, smooth and error-free. But that's where the positives end. The game is overly simplified, the storyline fails to captivate, and the gameplay tends to become monotonous over time. There's not enough freedom to explore character roles, combat is uninspired, offering no real motivation to experiment with different strategies, and the side quests feel like mere excuses for more and more battles. Although it's definitely not living up to what I had hoped for, we're still having an action RPG filled with charm and set in a gorgeous fairy tale realm, and I have no doubt that many Dragon Age enthusiasts will once again embark on a quest to vanquish the looming evil. So let's explore some key elements that can help you to improve your gaming experience and elevate your gameplay. Avoid spending excessive time on the finer details of your character's look, since you can modify it while playing. The only elements that are set in stone are your race, faction, and background. Also, your faction selection plays a significant role for multiple reasons, but ultimately boils down to your approach to the game. If you lean towards immersion, select your faction with the lore in mind. And conversely, if your goal is to maximize power and combat efficiency, pay attention to the faction bonuses that can influence your battles, including enhanced critical damage, extra potion charges, and various afflictions. Each weapon comes equipped with a damage stat and a stagger stat, both of which are pretty straightforward. The armor stats can appear a bit tricky at first, but they simplify once you get the hang of them. Each armor piece has a defense and ability damage percent gain, typically with heavier armor offering greater defense but lower ability damage, while lighter armor tends to provide the opposite. Also, Many pieces of equipment come with unique traits that are unlocked as the item rarity increases, and you can enhance the rarity of an item by obtaining another copy of it. You'll discover two types of altars in the game, and both are immensely helpful. The Fen Harrel altars will pop up on your minimap as you approach, granting you bonus skill points that can be transformed into permanent upgrades for your entire adventure. The Evanuris Altars will also appear on your minimap when you're nearby, providing another remarkable advantage by boosting your maximum health by 100 points once completed. So make sure you take the time to find these Altars while you're on your adventure. For those who have been following the Dragon Age series for years, this may not be a groundbreaking tip, but it's still important to highlight. While you're immersed in action, don't forget to make the most of your companions. Take charge of their targets, choose the abilities they activate, and decide when and how they should act to sync up with your approach. One of the most strategic moves you can make is to develop your character based on how you intend to utilize your companions in battle. You came a long way and made a valiant effort, Varric, but this story does not end with my downfall. Push! Yeah. 